You have to go back 52 years to find a Rice team that has had a better start than this year's Owl. The 2001 model wins with a run, and they've ran to a 6-1 record and are the only WAC team without a conference loss. But it's homecoming at La Tech, and one of the nation's most productive quarterbacks is poised to pass his team into the WAC title race. A contrast of styles provides the backdrop for a major WAC matchup next on Fox Sports Net. to Ruston, Louisiana, on the campus of Louisiana Tech University for WAC football. Today's conference matchup, first place Rice is 6-1 overall, in town to take on the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, who are 3-3. Three three. Take a look at the standings, you'll see the importance, and if you didn't stay up late last night, preseason fave Fresno lost again, Hawaii got them, that adds to the importance here today. Hi everyone, I'm Bill Land along with Gary Reasons. Not that these two needed any more juice flowing, but they certainly got it with what happened last night. Well, what they saw last night let them know that if they win this football game today, either team would be in the driver's seat in the conference race, and that's what they want to do today, Bill. Both teams powerful offenses, and they do it in vastly different styles. First of all, for the Rice Owls, they love to run the football. It starts with their quarterback, the youngster, Kyle Herm, and he's got a nice fullback to feed it off to and Robbie Beck. Well, Ken Hatfield runs a spread option offense attack. It's the wishbone. It's the old wishbone days and Kyle Herm runs that quarterback position very well. He gets around the corner, quickness at the quarterback position. And Robbie Beck, just a sophomore, doing a good job for him. 156 yards a week ago. I tell you, he actually had the winning touchdown in overtime for that football team. They expect good things from him today, Bill. La Tech coming off an overtime loss to Auburn. They love to throw it, throw it, and throw it some more. And they got the guy to fire with their sophomore quarterback, Luke McCown. And one of his best receivers is actually a running back, John Simon. Well, Luke McCown is just a fun quarterback to watch. He throws it a lot. A couple games this year, Bill, he had 407 yards passing. That's in each football game. Has some great numbers on the year. And John Simon, he's the guy they want to get the football to a lot. And they'll do it a lot of different ways. Throw it to him out of the backfield, line him up at a wide receiver as well. Beautiful day for football. The lucky guy down on the sidelines with us today is Kevin Eschenfeld. Guys, you need to open the sunroof up there. Let's talk about this Rice offense. They will run it and run it and then run it a little bit more. Very, very successful. Now, there's not a coach in the country that likes to prepare to defend against the option. So we asked Jack McNell, the head coach at Louisiana Tech, what they did special this week to prepare for Rice. Well, it, the option is very difficult to prepare for. Obviously, you haven't seen it all year, and so to be able to teach it to your student-athletes in one week is very difficult, but the main thing we try to do is try to recreate the speed because that's the most difficult thing, and we've had wide receivers playing quarterback, and, and we've gotten a real good effort out of our scout team, and hopefully that'll help us. Well, the number two rushing offense in the country and the number three passing offense in the country. Guys, this should be fun. All right, it's the Bulldogs and the Owls. Whack football coming straight ahead on Fox Sports Net. hoping to fly high today against the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs in Western Athletic Conference football from Ruston, Louisiana. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, and Kevin Eschenfelder in the Fox Sports Net crew with you. And hope you're having a great Saturday afternoon go, go, as these two get Here ready to Here fight for first place in the WAC. And it is a great day for football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little breezy, but not a cloud in the sky with 63-degree temperature, the humidity at 40%, and the wind out of the west at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And that certainly might have a little bit of effect on the Louisiana Tech throwing game. For the Rice Owls, it's run it, run it, and run it some more. And Ken Hadfield, the head coach of the Owls in his eighth year at Rice, and with their best start since 1949, he took him to a share of the Southwest Conference back in 94 to the league championship. His best record at Rice, 7-4, 96-97. and 97. 
and this bunch rolling at six and one, their only loss to the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. On the other side is Jack Bicknell in his third year, 14 and 15. His first season after he was elevated from the offensive line coach, he went eight and three. A little tough going last year. They have always played an unbelievable schedule. They're excited to be in a league alone fighting for first place. And the kickoff comes to Louisiana Tech. It is taken after the 22-yard line and brought down by White. And carrying the football was Eric Franklin. And it for the Bulldogs, they'll come out on offense with quarterback Luke McCowan. And the offensive unit, McCowan, has already thrown for 1,983 yards, 15 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. And it's that last mark, that 10, the coach Jack McDowell says we'd like him to be a little bit more careful, but they love his gutsy ways and his confidence getting better every time out. So first and 10 from the 21. And the throw is complete for the 25 and out across the 30. Should be a first down at the 31-yard line. D.J. Curry, the sophomore from Spring Hill, Louisiana. Now, the rest of the offense for Louisiana Tech. Take a look at McCown and his career numbers. This guy is just a sophomore. Didn't get his first start till nearly mid-season last year against Tulsa. Big offensive line, the biggest 6'6", 331-pound Damian Laverne anchors that right side. Everybody can catch the football. The leader is Daig as he has 43 grabs for 535 yards. And on the first down, Rice comes up with a big defensive play as Smith is tackled. And let's take a look at the Rice defense, Gary. Well, the defensive Rice has to do a very good job in a passing game, and their defensive front has to get some pressure. They're going to expect Brandon Green to get back there and pressure McCann from his defensive end position, and the linebackers have to play extremely well also, Bill. Joe Bob Thompson leads that group. He's a leading tackler on the defense. And I'll tell you, the secondary has some tremendous players. Patrick Denny is a good cover corner. Jason Abair, I'll tell you, he's a good free safety in this conference. we got some great veterans to anchor this club. It is second down and 12 and incomplete. Almost picked off in the secondary by the Rice Owls on the deflection so coming up on third down now for Louisiana Tech Louisiana Tech three and three a 48 41 overtime loser to Auburn last week at Auburn they were down 31 13 before they came roaring back and McCowan had the three TD passes but five interceptions in that game third and 12 from the 29 for McCowan and the Bulldogs Good protection. Wide open and complete first down at the 43-yard line. Harris making the reception. Harris gets his 18th grab of the year. Kenny Smith, the right corner, was covering on the play, a senior from Gulfport, Mississippi. Well, Bill, you'll see what the Bulldogs like to do. They put five wide receivers in the passing game here. McCown just reads the defensive coverage and throws a strike out to Harris on the outside. The Rice defense is going to change it up. A little bit of man, a little bit of zone coverage, and pressure the quarterback as well. It's the only way you can really defend this uh, offensive attack. First to 10 at the 43. You see third long, not a problem. How about first to 10? Going deep and incomplete. As Dendy was covering on the play, Dave, their leading receiver, the intended receiver on that play. Well, Luke McCown had a receiver out with a step behind Dendy that time. Dig, you see him here. He's having to come back for the football. The ball's a little bit underthrown, but Dendy catches up to make the play. So Louisiana Tech not afraid to go for broke. And to mention the third and 12, you come back and get the first down. You go ahead and really do anything you want first down. Second and 10 here at the 43. First possession for the Bulldogs. And incomplete off of Dig. Dendy there to pick it up in case... It was ruled a completion. You see Dag a little disappointed himself. With 43 catches, five touchdowns this year, 535 yards. His longest play, a 39-yard reception. He's a senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Well, Dag has become their go-to receiver outside of John Simon, number eight. Number nine is the guy they're going to throw the ball to a lot. He's had a couple of big games so far this season, Bill. And it sets up another third and long. Third and 10 from the 43 as you look at Coach Pignell on the sidelines here in Ruston. Out of the shotgun is McCown. And flags will stop this one. 
The name sounds familiar, and you've seen that McCown name. Well, it should as far as quarterbacks. Of course, got two brothers that have played quarterback. Josh was at false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains. Third down. Josh was at SMU before transferring to Sam Houston State. Doing very well there. And, of course, Randy, a standout at Texas A&M. Yeah, and his, this younger brother here, Josh, is, excuse me, Luke, is doing a good job with his Bulldog team. Came in last year as a freshman. They didn't really expect him to play as a true freshman, but he just showed the, the confidence and ability to get it done, and they put him out there and did a, did a great job. And, and here in his sophomore season, just lighting things up. Third and 15 from the 38-yard line. McCown sets up the screen, and it's incomplete. John Simon had some blockers there, but some receivers who normally don't drop balls have dropped a couple here, and then one underthrown by McCown, and now Louisiana Tech will have to punt. John White was covering on that play. It'll be a fourth and 15 with 13.46 remaining in the first half, and here's the difference. La Tech runs, what, six, seven plays. How much time's off the clock? Minute and 15. Yeah. Now, Rice runs six or seven plays. We're talking midway through the quarter. <laughs> and the punt by Upton. Takes a La Tech roll down to the 11-yard line, almost the 10. And that's where the Rice Owls will get their first possession. We'll be back with it here on Fox Sports Net. No score, first quarter. Enjoying the gorgeous day, La Tech punts the football, and interesting result here, Gary, that we didn't see initially. Well, Rice thought they were going to be back up at the 10-yard line, but you're going to see here, Corey Brazil, number 10, the ball actually hits his face mask. It's going to be hit around the 27-yard line, and they move it down. Initially spotted at the 10-yard line, but a good close look at it, and they've adjusted it on the field, and correctly so. Otherwise, it would have been a big hole for Rice to come out of to start this ball game. First to 10 for the 27 flag thrown as Rice coming out throwing, looking for Beck off his fingertips as Kyle Herm put that one right on the money. And Gray was covering. Gray is their all everything defensive back, but as I mentioned, a flag thrown. A little surprise from Rice coming out with a throw on the first down, Gary. A little play action is what they do best. I think we're going to have a five yard penalty replay. First jump down. in the neutral zone by the defense. A hard count by the quarterback, Herm. And will make it first and five now. And the Owls. There's Herm and his numbers rushing 486, passing 463. And again, on the ground as expected. Herm keeping it that time, has the first down out across to the 41 yard line. Gray making the tackle. And Rice. They love to run it behind that veteran offensive line, and you see what Herm can do, and so versatile with the passing as well. They've been more effective in their passing game, and they throw it about 14 times a game. Fowler is a three-year starter that anchors that veteran group up front. They don't throw it much. They do spread it around. Okoronkwo has eight receptions to lead that group. The leading receiver overall is Booth with nine. And on the first and 10, about five as Herm keeps it to the 46-yard line. It'll be second and five. And the Tech defense, they made some changes, Gary. Normally, we'd expect a 3-4 look. Well, they would go normally 3-4, but they're going to put four defensive linemen down to take a, take a, a little something away from Rice to play that option attack. The linebackers have to play well. Number 47, John Nash, gets his first start of the middle linebacker position for, for the Bulldogs in the secondary. Bobby Gray, the Rover, is going to make a lot of plays today. He's in the middle of the field on all sets. And Rice. The two half backs and the full back in the option game and Herm keeps the football now pitches at the last minute Bradley falls on it got a first down though as Leroy Bradley looked as if he was fooled by Herm's deception also Gary I'm not so sure Herm should have just kept it right from the get-go well Herm turned the corner very well did a nice job getting out there and sometimes when a quarterback's running the option it's one of those things hey can I get more yardage pitching the football he's got somebody on him usually a general rule for a quarterback as they tell him, if you're in contact, don't pitch the ball because that can make the pitch go awry and it did there. Rice. Leonard made the tackle. John Michael Leonard from West Monroe, Louisiana, just 30 miles down the road. Leroy Bradley, veteran from Baker, Florida, and they carry that time. Well, defensively, and go ahead, Bill, but for de defensively for Louisiana Tech, it's going to be more of a 4-4 defense. They're asking their strong safeties to come up. Michael John Leonard and Michael Johnson to play the outside, the alley position. They're going to allow uh, Bobby Gray the